Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're in section 742 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, second edition. This covers gauge transformations. So we just learned about the magnetic vector potential and the scalar potential and how they behave in electrodynamics, uh, which is slightly differently for the vector potential. The, I'm sorry, the, the V, the V, uh, scalar potential, because it has to take into account the fact that the curl of E is not zero. You know, the curl of E is equal to the change in the V field, and so there's a, there's a dependence on A there. Um, in gauge transformations, we, we remember back when we said electrostatics, we said you can pick any V you want. You can add any number to the, to the potential that you calculate. It doesn't matter what you choose as long as you don't violate the rule that the gradient of that potential has to equal the electric field, or negative of the gradient of that has to equal the electric field. And for the A vector, we had a, a bit of a roundabout discussion where we discussed um, how you can add um, you can add things to the A vector um, as long as you didn't change the fact that the curl of A didn't change. You can use um, any term you wanted. You can even introduce a divergent A vector field um, because the curl of a divergence is zero. It wouldn't change anything. And we decided by by way of convention that we're just going to choose A fields that have a divergence of zero to make our lives a little bit easier. Well here we have a predicament because there's no really easy choice like that for the systems we have. Okay, And there's actually multiple um, gauge transformations we can use. What I'm going to do right now is, is go through section 742 where he covers what a gauge transformation would look like, how you can change these, these potential fields and still get the same E and B vectors. Okay. So, he says, let's suppose that we have a V and an A field that work, and we want to find a different V and A field that will still give us the same E and B. Okay? So we can't violate the constraints that um, the E vector has to be negative the gradient of V minus the time derivative of the A vector, and the B vector has to be equal to the curl of the A vector. Okay. So for the A V vector, V prime is just going to be V plus some scalar field beta. Okay. And A prime is going to be A vector, this is vectors, plus some vector field alpha. Okay. If we plug this into B, we find that the B vector of a prime is going to be the curl of a prime, which is the curl of a plus alpha. Well, what's the curl of a? That's just the B field that we found originally, plus this curl of alpha. Okay. So by process of elimination, we find that zero, the curl of alpha must be zero. Okay. Let's box that. That's kind of an important result. This is not unlike what we found for the A vector in magnetostatics. The curl of whatever thing we wanted to add to that vector field had to be zero. Well, if the curl of something is zero, then that implies that this field itself is the divergence of some other field. We're going to call this other field lambda. Okay? I'm sorry, not the divergence, the gradient of some scalar field lambda. Okay. So, let's box that. Okay. For the electric field, so our E field has to stay the same. That has to be equal to negative the gradient of V minus the time derivative of A vector. And we can't have anything change when we introduce our new V and A vectors. Okay. Well, this is just minus the gradient of V plus beta. And this is just the time derivative of a vector plus alpha vector. Okay, so distribute it out. And cancel like terms. So we get these terms cancel out. And so we basically zero has to equal the gradient I'm sorry, that's gradient of beta and the time derivative of alpha. Okay? 
So the, the alpha we found w was uh, the gradient of lambda. So we can write this out this way. Uh, so we have the gradient of beta minus the time derivative of lambda. So we basically brought the gradient out. Okay. And so we basically get that this beta has to be equal to um, minus the time derivative of lambda. Okay. Now, lambda could contain some pr parameter. Um, so this has to be zero, but that there's no reason why it can't. The, the divergence, ha, uh, the gradient has to be zero. d by dx, d by dy, d by dz of this has to all equal zero. What about d by dt? Well, d by t, dt of this could be zero. You could have a b that's changing over time. Okay, and so we actually can add in this extra kt term. It depends on the time, um, but uh, it, it's probably not surprising that you could absorb this term into the lambda such that you have a lambda that's really something like you know something plus you know the integral from 0 to t of k of t dt per, okay when you take the derivative of this you're just going to get k of t back okay so lambda can easily absorb uh, some kind of time dependence and that'll be okay so in the end we say that our alpha prime, our a prime, can be anything that works plus the uh, gradient of lambda. Our v prime can be anything that works minus the time derivative of lambda, whatever lambda you choose. Okay, so beta has to be negative the time derivative of lambda, and lambda can be a function of x, y, z, and t. And that's fine. It'll still work. Okay. So this is the bottom line: is we can choose any a or v vector that works, and we can we can convert back to any other a or v vector that works as long as we follow this simple rule: that we take some scalar function x, y, z, t, and we add we subtract the time derivative from from, from our v, and we add the gradient to our a, and then we'll always get the same E and B vectors no matter what lambda we choose. Thanks for your time.